Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Against the Storm, shall we? Alright, so we're trying to get everybody a house. We are in the clearance. We have a storm coming in three minutes, but that's okay. What we are trying to do also is build a smokehouse, enable meat in the jerky recipe, and um, make jerky in the smokehouse. So we're going to go over to food production and build ourselves a smokehouse. So this does not need to be close uh, to the hearth, but it's nice to be close to the warehouse with something like this. So, let's see, where can I put it? This clay is kind of in the way. I can put it here. People will have to walk through it, but I think that's going to be okay. That's a large clay deposit. Um, you'll see that if I hold B, it's two stars. So, I need something. I need a workshop uh, or a camp that could gather two star and the stonecutters camp can so if I want to do that I can get that rolling do we need clay well what we really need is meat so let's just see how we're doing um, I have people in the woodcutters camp and I have a trapper camp here but I could build another trapper camp for the meat and the mushrooms that are up here so I'm just going to push select or uh, shift rather to duplicate the structure and we'll build one here and if we build it right here actually what's awesome is they'll just take the meat directly to the smokehouse instead of the warehouse because uh this is closer so they can take this kind of temporary storage and then unload it into the smokehouse now what we have to do is um, i'm going to pause it to talk to you about this so in the production building window for the smokehouse it's not even done but we can alter it so you see right here for jerky, it's checked. We want to make this. We've got pottery and we've got incense. There's this red ring right here for insects. And, and that means that we don't have insects. But you can mouse over it and it says alternatives. And if I click on this, meat is grayed out because it's not selected. But I can then select meat and then go back. And now there's two pips of green. And now this is no longer a red wheel because it'll work. I don't have insects. But I do have that. And then I can select anything else from here. But we're not going to use coal. We're just going to use wood and meat to make our jerky. I'm going to put this at one priority because I want this to be made over everything else. Now, if we get clay, we can actually make pottery. And um, we could look at this. And we do have a little bit of resin that we could use if we wanted to to make this incense. But I'm going to set the top priority as jerky so that they'll make this first when it's available. And this is going to be a few jobs, and this is going to be a few jobs. But I'm not going to have all of my labor accounted for, so I think it's okay to go ahead and throw in a stonecutter's camp. You just put it right here. I'm going to rotate it so it faces out. Continue building the path um, up here. All right, wonderful. So this is done. So I'm going to put all of the lizards that we have on the smokehouse making our meat. So you see how we have a smokehouse. We have enabled meat in the recipe. And now we need to make 20 jerky and we've got it. Okay. And... This camp is also, um, nobody is there for that, but I only have five lizards and they're all working on their specified activity. So I'm going to go ahead and put humans there, even though they're not the best at it, just because I want somebody gathering the stuff up there. And you can see this camp has come in. And I'll pause the game. We have just also discovered a glade. So I have three people unemployed. I will put one of them at the Stonecutters camp. But then this, I'm going to click on this small encampment. It's a glade event. It's a destroyed camp in the wilderness. And there's still survivors. So again, 
I'm going to go ahead and get this beaver and this lizard. So all we need are vegetables. And you can see that if I mouse over this, we have 67 stored. So I'm going to click welcome new people. And we'll just put the beaver and the person and click investigate and let them go. Now we'll probably run into a housing issue uh, unless one of these doesn't have people. You can go through your different residences by using the arrows. There's one free space, it looks like. So we're going to need to build another one. I'm just going to go ahead and plan that. I have no free builders, but we will eventually. So I'm just going to kind of put that in so that it happens. It's telling us we have no builders, but that's all right. I'm going to speed it up to double time. And let's just click on this, make sure they're doing jerky, and they are. Now, this camp, we're still kind of cutting that, but I'm going to actually move this to over here, and we're going to push F, and we're going to cut into these glades instead. And then where is my other woodcutting camp? It's actually in a good place. All right, so now we've uh, got the new people. We have four builders, and we have one homeless, so they'll immediately go here. And what I can do is I'm going to use my lizard that we just got and displace one of the humans so that they can work at that facility. And then I'm going to put a human on the stonecutter's camp and just make sure that we have beavers going everywhere we do. So I'm going to put a beaver at the smokehouse as well to make some more jerky. It is raining, so people are unhappy. Now, something you can do if you want to manage hostility of the forest is you can see how um, we're getting some hostility because uh, we're cutting woods or people are out in the storm. So uh, it's not really necessary. Oh, we can't even do it at this stage. You can toggle people off of wood cutting in the storm if you want to keep people indoors to keep the forest happy. But it, right at this point, it's not necessary. It's not even there's a button up here normally if you can do that. The impatience is growing, but you already see we have 10 out of 20 jerky, so we're going to be just fine on that. Everything is now built. Let's see if we have any labor frames holding all. We don't, but we did discover a new glade that has a abandoned cache. So when you get to a situation like this, it's your choice of breaking open the crate and getting 15 bricks and 30 uh, grain, or using three tools to kind of pack it up and send it back to the citadel and get 10 amber and five queen's grace. Early on, it's usually probably best to take resources. You never know when you're going to use them, but they're always nice to have. And it doesn't hurt you to do this. If you feel like you're in the home stretch, you want to win, or you're right close to a blueprint, or you really need amber, you can always send it back. But I'm going to go ahead and break it open. I have plenty of stone, and I'm going to put my two free workers on this task and investigate. This will give us some bricks and some grain. Now it's worth just looking at our indicators. Fuel is going up, crafting resources up, building materials up, and food is finally going up. I'm going to push T for orders, and we can deliver this. We will get nets, which give us plus one to meat production, which will help our food. Um, Builder's Pack is a perk that says any builder can carry five additional items, which is so nice for um, faster construction of buildings. And then Barrels, which we need for other recipes, we'll click Deliver, and we also get a Queen's Grace, which will boost our um, reputation and gain us a blueprint and we need to make a brewery which let's just guess indeed yes that's what we get right here so the brewery is a structure that can produce ale pickle goods and packs of crops now ale is the number one and humans and beavers like ale so this provides um, a kind of comfort good for them that they can hang out um, in a tavern or near the hearth and just drink ale and this will make them happier pickle goods beavers love those so that's good for them now this can use drizzle water so we say pick um but we don't have uh, well water comes up later we don't have to talk about that right now we don't even have the facility to collect it 
Um, I'm going to go to industry, and this is where you'll actually find the brewery. So it's no longer in food production or champs. We're up here, and we'll build a brewery. And we want it to be kind of close to home. It's not a huge deal. I'm going to put it over here, just in case I need to build more houses. We have no builders available, and that's because everybody's doing a job over here. Now, I think it's also worth mentioning, in industry, I always like to have a crude workstation built. Because, even though it's only at one star, it allows you to make planks, fabrics, bricks, and pipes. Which are all things that you need for tier 2 stuff. Just anything beyond what is basic wood or parts. And so I'm going to put this, you know, wherever it can fit. That's close-ish to the warehouse. Where can you go? Hmm. Not great, but uh, we could put it down. Oh, fine, I'll put it up here. Now, yes, we have no workers, but that's just because they're doing this job right here. And you see that they're done with it, but it's important to note that even though they're done with these, the cash, they have to still transport the rewards to the warehouse so they don't free up as builders right away. Now, we get to pick a cornerstone because we're through the stone, uh, the storm, rather. 50% of the amount of goods produced in the brewery or... Grain production increases by plus one by every 25 times it's produced. I'm going to go with efficient brewing so we can brew stuff faster. And we will as soon as they deliver these goods. Remember, they got the bags so they can actually carry a little bit more. You could see that they're actually resting by the fire. This one is then um, fetching goods to store. So they're going to come back here. I'm actually going to push G and I'm going to tell them to stop cutting down that tree so that they'll focus on these trees to uncover that glade. You can click on this, and you can see now there's only five bricks left. And then this person is taking stuff away. They both are carrying bricks. Five bricks each. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Newcomers are waiting. Great. So, we can get three. Um, I'm going to take this one over here now this will put us with a homeless situation so i will immediately just build another one also um you can see that our hearth level is uh zero so if we want to build four decorations can we do that yeah i'm going to do that i'm going to build decorations uh we can put them one two it doesn't matter which ones you build. You just need to build four of them. And once they do, it's worth mentioning. I don't know if they've explained the hearth level, but you can get the information here. Hearths can be upgraded by building homes, decorations, and service buildings within their range. Each level will grant you bonuses to resolve, production speed, and production output. These bonuses stack with each hearth in your settlement. So if we get to level one... Um, this gives a plus two to global resolve, so everyone gets a resolve boost, and it helps your hearth's resistance to corruption by 150. Now, it says upgrade requirements in the bottom right, and you need at least eight people housed within the hearth's range, and we have 24. So you see we have 24 of the eight we need, but we have zero comfort decorations. You notice the green border around the decorations. These are comfort decorations. So if I click the decorations button, some of them, like the garden, are blue. These are aesthetic decorations. And then these are harmony decorations, these yellow border. You need the green ones. And you need to build one that counts as four. So this park, by the way, counts as four, whereas the, the, um, the bench counts as one, and the fence counts as one. So these are all one. This is four. Build whatever you like to fill that requirement. And we finished building the brewery. Now, this is where humans like to work, but we have none free. So what we can do is we know that we have some free labor. We're going to hold alt to see what we've got. We've got beavers. I'm going to replace the stonecutters camp humans with beavers so that I can drop the people into the brewery where they are doing um, their specialization. Now, it's not their 
Primary, it is um, their comfortable specialization, but still they're good at it. And what we're going to do is go to the brewery, and we need to make ale. So let's click on pottery, and remember we got all those barrels. So enable the barrels to be used. And then grain, we have 68 of it, so we have plenty. I'm going to push this up to make it number one priority. And we can, if we want, make pickle goods. There's nothing wrong with that by um, enabling barrels. And then you can pickle vegetables, you can pickle mushrooms, whatever you like. Then we can make packs of crops too, but we want to make ale. So they're going to go get the goods. They're getting the grain. They're going to load up to set this place up. And now you can see they're going to get goods. Wow, well, that person's taking a break, unfortunately. And they're getting the vegetables, and now they can actually make ale. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to finish building this path over here. Just for symmetry. The builder is done with the house, so everybody has a home. And this is almost done <laughs> so it looks like they're delivering the final bits of the goods yep and this person is idling so we can right click and kick them out of that job and then the idler would have gotten displaced as soon as the final goods got delivered you see how that event disappeared and now those people became idle but if you want to expedite that you can just kick out the person who has nothing to do by right clicking them and giving them jobs now over here we can just put some people to work making planks so you know eh, we actually need everything that's fine so they'll start doing that for us and we have somebody working just about everywhere uh, food. Your villagers need food in order to survive. Indeed, every few minutes they will go on a break, gather around the hearth, and try to get something edible from the warehouse. If nothing they like is available, like pickle goods for beavers, they will eat raw food. If there is no food whatsoever, they will get a stack of hunger. Each stack works at a resolve penalty, as a resolve penalty, and if the resolve of a species reaches zero, they'll start leaving. So this means that if they start to starve, you aren't um, they're not immediately going to die. But you definitely want them uh, to not starve so that they don't leave your base and get upset. Now, you can see by our food indicator, we have plenty. Um, even if you grow vegetables on your farms, the amount of food you produce will soon become insufficient for a growing population. The solution is to produce raw food and thus multiply it as... Most recipes yield more goods than the raw ingredients. So what they're telling you is you have to kind of scale it up with industry. Like we're doing here, for example, in the brewery, making these pickled goods. This will, um, you know, feed people. You see how six vegetables and three pots makes 15 pickled goods? So you're more than doubling the amount of vegetables there. And this is what we're going to be trying to do. Also, the great example of that would be jerky. Jerky is taking four meat and five wood and turning it into ten food. So yes, it takes wood, but it's really, really nice for us. And now I think I can actually move this and see if there's any other glades that we want to work through. And yes, both of these. So I'm going to put it here and put this here. Now, if I wanted to, I could build a warehouse down here to store goods. And what that would allow me to do, like, so that these guys wouldn't have to walk all the way back here to deliver the resources so they could keep cutting wood if I felt like that was necessary. And it is a good idea, but we're going to beat this mission so soon that I don't think we need to do that. But in the long game, you definitely want to start thinking like that. I'm going to go to Brewing Ale. We finished this mission so we can deliver it. And now uh, we have a new objective to make a tavern. Okay, so we're going to 
um, get our blueprint, which is, yep, a tavern. A place where villagers can fulfill their need for leisure, luxury, passive effects, Gleeman's Tale. So, um, you'll see what this means. But basically, we'll pick it, and now we can go to city buildings and throw in a tavern. Now, in a bigger game, we would have already built a trading post, for example. But let's go ahead and put in this tavern. It needs to be within range of the hearth, which is worth mentioning. And we can put it... Do we have space? Yeah, we do. Down here. All right. Now, this doesn't have all of its building materials because it needs planks, it needs bricks, and it needs um, cloth. So, it's worth going on the building materials tab up here and seeing what we have. We have cloth, we have planks, we have bricks. Actually, we have, kind of have everything that we need right there. We might need a little bit more cloth, but um, this guy is making it, so we're going to be fine. What you can do, obviously, is go to your crude workstation where you're producing some of these things and change the priority based on what you're looking for to finish the tavern. Now, they've started to load stuff. You see they're 19 to 20 here. The builders are kind of bringing all the supplies in. And we're at 4 out of 4 bricks. We could put the path down here. Oh, it is worth mentioning, if I mouse over this, you'll see we're at now at level 1 for the encampment. And this is why everybody's a little bit happier. Our lizards are so happy that they're blue that they're actually giving us passive reputation points. So you see how, if I mouse over this, it says high resolve um, is plus 0.10 per minute. So we're just, over time, we're just getting resolve because these guys are happy. And this is filling in um, services. Villagers fulfill their most basic needs, such as food and clothing, at the hearth, and need only the right goods to do so. However, there's a separate category of needs that require not only resources, but a special building called service, uh, services, like the tavern. And they include leisure, luxury, or religion, and you fulfill them by producing that right item, and then you assign workers to it, and they'll take goods from the warehouse and bring them there and serve the residents. But it's important that it says right here, villagers don't have to physically go to a service building to fulfill their service needs. They will still rest at the hearth as usual, but for them to fulfill the need for leisure, a tavern must be present and operating somewhere in the settlement. So they don't actually have to walk to it, so it's proximity isn't important. It just needs to be there and have workers and then they can get that benefit. So lizards, why are they so happy? Well, it's because they're getting jerky. They're housed, they're getting jerky, and then um, we have some bonuses from the fact that they're comfortable. The sacred pyre and the encampment boosting up to level one gives us plus two, like we talked about. So you can open up this little tab here, and anything that's highlighted or illuminated is telling you that they're getting that bonus. Now we've got some newcomers. What do we want? Um, I will take this variety. No. Yeah, I still want lizards, so I'll take this bottom one. And we do need to build another house. I'm just going to push shift and build that house right there. The tavern's coming in. Tavern is going to want uh, people, I believe, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I was so busy I didn't even notice two things. Number one, this is no longer in range of clearing out this glade. So we'll do that. We'll also turn on that path to get there. And then we got over here, which if we break this open, we can get a bunch of roots and parts, or we could send it back for a boost. So I'm going to break it open, and I'm going to put some free workers on this job and investigate. So you always have to kind of pay attention. Um, there's so many things happening sometimes that you don't hear the notification of the glade. But just check in on your woodcutters camps and make sure they're within range of clearing a glade. You always want that happening. You will fall behind if you're not getting wood and you're not clearing glades. All right, so the tavern right here. Um, humans do indeed get a benefit. So let's see, where do we have people working that, you know... They don't need to be. Okay, good. Let's put one human here. 
And then over here at the trapper's camp, I actually have a free lizard, so let's put the lizard there. And then go ahead and put a person here. Now I have no builders, which is a shame. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to kick out a person from the tavern. Now, what this means is this human can work at the tavern, and they're going to go try and get um, ale to provide leisure. And if we had wine, they could provide luxury, but we don't really have any wine, but we do have ale. Now, if you have three people working here, you get this Gleeman's Tales, um, and it gives you plus three to global result. People can come here, hang out, listen to the Gleeman sing, but we need more free workers for that to happen. Now, this order says 20, zero out of 20 need for leisure fulfilled. This just happens over time. Whenever anyone takes a break and then goes to the hearth, they will fulfill their need for leisure. Now, I'm going to move this stonecutter's camp. It says it's got nothing, so I'm going to move it. And is there anything around? Now, you, what you could do whenever you're moving something is when you pick it up, look at the map, and you'll see the little circle jump up and point with an arrow at something you can get. So in the bottom left, you see the clay icon. We just move down here, and it's telling us, hey, there's a whole bunch of clay. And actually, yes, there is a whole bunch of clay. We're going to move it right there, and they're going to start working. Now, now that I have clay and this here, I think why not just go ahead and build a small warehouse right there. Okay, we got a new glade. And this glade has um, an abandoned cache that we can break open with a lot of good stuff. It also has uh, some flax, okay? So now that it's unlocked, I'm actually going to just push G and tell the beavers to stop cutting these trees and focus on these to unlock the new glade. It is storm time. Everybody's going to run away. Rightfully so. And the trapper's camp has no deposits. So again, you see all the meat highlighted right here. We're just going to push M and we'll move it up here. I'm going to rotate it so its door points outward. And we're going to keep the meat rolling in so that we can get the jerky uh, topped off. Now, if you ever were looking at one of your resources, like we have a lot of lumber. Or if you were looking at food and you were like, you know what? I think we have enough jerky forever. You can then go to the smokehouse and we could kick this beaver off of the smokehouse and be like, we have enough people there. We don't really need that. You could focus on doing something else. And in fact, we could say you could focus on doing this. So we could put one beaver on this job and tell them to break it open. It won't be the fastest, but they'll get it done. And this trapper's camp over here has nothing. So again, we see way over here, there's one meat. So let's get this. And the reason we're building it here is because we're trying to create this little uh, warehouse so they can deliver the goods immediately. Orders are complete, push T and deliver it. We get two beavers right away. And they want us to keep humans above 25 resolve for 30 seconds. Well, it's a storm and the humans are already at 27. So that's actually really easy. Oh, we already got the credit for it. Great. So now it's time to get to this next quest, which is packs of provisions. Well, we'll show you how to make that. Um, we got a couple of blueprints. So what do we want? Well, now they're giving us an actual choice. And this choice is to build a specialized house for one of your species and remember you kind of look at who who you have the most of so we have the most of beavers and what resources do i have the most of well i can get planks so let's click the beaver house and try to get them happy although their resolve threshold is really high and humans is actually closer so maybe we should have gone with humans now we got the recipe or the blueprint for a makeshift post and at the makeshift post this is kind of like the crude workstation. I always build this because it lets you immediately, even at one star, it's not the best, build pack of provisions, pack of crops, and pack of building materials. So we'll pick it, and we're going to go to industry, and we're going to do a makeshift post, and we'll just put it right here. Actually, we could put it where the stone, the clay used to be, and the stonecutter's camp is kind of right there. And then we'll unpause it. 
All right, it's now daytime. So everybody's happy. Everybody's actually booming. And we're going to clear this mission before we even need to make these pack of provisions because we're getting 0.26 passive resolve or reputation per minute based on the high resolve of the humans and the lizard. All right, so we leveled up our account to level two, which means we permanently unlocked all of these blueprints to and these cornerstones to be involved in our future games and we get this citadel upgrades unlocked we're level two we got 10 hot cross buns and we click continue the world is a vast ever-changing place and at its heart lies the smoldering city Enter the Smoldering City and use the resources you've gathered so far to buy the Obsidian Archive Level 1 upgrade. So, what we're seeing right now is this hexagonal world map, where we can actually start exploring and doing roguelike progression by moving around and gathering resources to do exactly this. I'm going to click on the Smoldering City. We're going to go in, and we can click the Buy Upgrade buttons in the bottom right, and now, this is where you can see the meta progression in the game, and where things really start to balloon at least in terms of my enjoyment. So here's the different currencies we have. We have food stockpiles, we have zero machinery, zero artifacts, but we can then click on this and they want us to buy the Obsidian Archive Level 1. And if we get this, we'll get a permanent minus two to the speed at which the Queen's impatience grows. And it unlocks deeds. So we do this and now we got deeds unlocked. Then we can go up here and unlock um, the obsidian archive level two or you can go and get the monastery of the vigilant flame um, to get different embarkation bonuses like stone and clay i'm going to go ahead and just get the archive level two you see the line that connects them that means that you must have the previous unlock on that chain uh, opened or unlocked in order to move further up i'm going to click on deeds and these are just like little achievements that you can now do in the game to get rewards and unlock more stuff. So now we can buy upgrades, we can get deeds, and we can go out to the map and go different places. So the world is governed by the eternal blightstorm cycle. It's almost upon us, so no caravans are allowed to embark. Press the button in the lower right corner of the screen to finish the cycle. So in the lower right corner, you'll see this little button here. You can just click on this to finish the cycle. We finished it, and we start getting rewards. And we see what we've unlocked, we see what we get, and we end it. Your goal as a viceroy is to reach the ancient seals with your caravan and reforge them, pushing back the blightstorm. You're almost ready to venture out on your own. Choose any map tile inside your embarkation range to begin. So what they're saying is um, we can move the camera with WASD and we can go wherever we want. Now, when I click on one of these tiles, you'll notice in the upper left it tells you what you're where you're going to which is the royal woodlands the minimum difficulty we can play which is settler and then the effect that we get which is um green effects are positive and red are negative so there's a positive effect in play and then if we clear this we get 14 food stockpiles and one um fragment now what you want to notice is that you get the reward of the tile you clear and then every adjacent uh hex so the reason we're getting 14 is because we're getting like all of those buns so if i go here um well maybe it's specialized for this first one um it usually varies based on how many free um unplundered hexes you're targeting but in this case it's just the same reward it looks like now this one actually gives you better um because you're going up here near the uh, royal outpost and it says it makes it easier to communicate with the crown. The pool of order choices is increased by one. So that's good. You get an extra order. And if you go over here and we're in the woodlands and you actually get a bigger reward for going here. 
So you want to mouse around, and then here, whoa, you get a lot of good stuff, but you get a negative effect. So you get a red effect and a green effect, but we can get food stockpiles, artifacts, um, those machinery, and then you also get a, uh, a resupply, which we do not need. So I'm going to kind of look around, and let's just go up here. To embark, you must first choose a caravan that will become the foundation of your town's population. And then you also want to choose a difficulty. The, uh, the higher the risk, the greater the reward. But beware, an inexperienced viceroy won't last long on the higher difficulties. And this is true. Lastly, use all of your embarkation points to take extra goods with you. All right, so let's, I'm going to go through this with you. You're finally ready to embark on your own. Remember, there is always a way out. Experiment and adapt. May the storm be gentle on you, Viceroy. So what they're telling you is this is how the game actually plays beyond the tutorial. Meaning that you will choose where you go. Then you choose your caravan. You choose your embarkation. And then you can see the rewards and the, the bonuses and the negatives. So what you could do right here, first of all, is click Summary. And you could see very clearly what's going on with your assignment. You can get the 17 stockpiles, the seal fragment, and then you'll get 30 experience for your account. There's an average amount of fertile soil and the length, we just have to get to 12 rep and we lose if we get to 14 impatience. The conditions are here. This is where you can mouse over and see what the bonuses are. So we get a um, gift of the wildlands, which means trees give more wood, which is amazing. And you get the royal outpost, which allows you to get an extra order. Then you'll see here, this is the resources that the trees will yield. Wood, resin, fiber, eggs, for example. And here are the available natural resources. And all of this information, later, as you have more technology and more your play style develops, will become important to telling you which buildings you want, what, what build order you want to do, what you want to focus on. Now I'm going to go back to caravans and explain this. Basically what they're saying is you can either have the top option or the bottom option. This third one is locked at the time being. So you can either take 8 humans and then get 20 jerky, 20 mushrooms, and 2 extra villagers. Or you could take 6 humans and 2 beavers and get 20 veg, 5 amber, and 2 villagers. So you pick which one you like the best. Now I like the second one because I want beavers. I always want beavers for cutting wood. So we'll take this one. And then once you've selected your caravan on the left, you need to select your embarkation bonuses on the right. Now, what it's telling you is that you have three points that you can spend, and you want to spend them. And then these resource piles, the green number in the upper right is how many embarkation points it takes to bring these with you. So you're venturing from the smoldering city to this point with a caravan, and you take the supplies that you see with the caravan over here, like the veg and the amber and the villagers, but then you also could take these supplies, and as you move later, you'll have actual choices to make about what you embark with. But this, we could select all three of these and definitely do it. Select all three. This means we'll start right away with 30 wood, 20 roots, and 20 eggs. And this is huge for giving us a boost of food and fuel and building resources. And then now... Once you've selected your caravan and your embarkation bonuses, you've selected your difficulty level, we're going to stay on Settler. I think for the next one, we'll play on Pioneer. It does get harder, but we're going to play on Settler, which means that villagers eat less food. It's just a great way to start the game and then ramp up the difficulty as you get more comfortable. But I'll tell you from experience, when I bumped up to Pioneer, it was a noticeable difference. Not like it was impossible, but it was just more difficult. So we're going to stay on Settler for right now and click Embark. And now, the additional effects. These were question marks before. So what this means is there are some effects that you don't know when you enter unless you have a way of scouting. So we also got this bonus of villagers have a 35% chance of not consuming food during a break, which is amazing. And then here are the effects in the forest, the forest mysteries. So during um, the drizzle, 
we get two bo positive effects, and then during the storm, we have these negative effects. And you can always see these in the game and, and kind of mouse over them to see what's going on. So what this means is that um, villagers who ha have fulfilled a complex food need just move 20% faster during the drizzle, which is awesome. And then this means that um, the chance of doubling loot from events solved during the drizzle during the drizzle is in, uh, increased by 25%. And then during the storm, we get a minus four to global resolve indeed. Now, it's really worth noting that it says active from hostility zero. Some events do not trigger until hostility is higher, for example. Um, so you don't have to worry about them until later in the game. But right now, this is hostility zero is where we start. So this is right away, looming darkness is in effect. But this one, the faint flame, this means resources you sacrifice in the ancient hearth burn 40% quicker, but this is only active from hostility to and beyond, so we don't have to worry about this in the beginning, and we're not usually sacrificing resources. We might talk about that, but we're not doing that right now, so this is not really that big of a deal. So we're going to close this, and here is our new starting area. Remember, different every time. You can see the glades around us. You can push B and see that we've got meat. We've got flax, we've got fertile soil right here. So all of these bits of information will help us make choices on our hearth, our, well, no, this is, I'm just reading over here on the right, um, make choices on what blueprints we select, um, for example. All right, everybody, this is a good place to stop this episode of our Complete Beginner's Guide. I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. I'll check you in the next one. Take care.